Anywho, chaps, let's talk about, continue our talk about Stoicism, going over the moral letters by Seneca. Letter 34 is a short one, and one that I found um, very appealing, because this really shows Seneca's personality, which is very nice. You, you truly get a glimpse of it. From Seneca to Lucilius, greetings. I swell, I exult, I shake off my years and feel again the heat of youth each time I learn from your letters and from your actions how far you have surpassed even yourself. For you broke from the pack some time ago. If a farmer takes delight when a tree bears fruit, if a herdsman is pleased when his animals bear young, if one who sees a protege reach adulthood always feels as if it were his own coming of age, then how do you think a person feels when he has been in charge of someone's intellectual development and sees that immature mind grown up all at once? I claim you as my own. You are my handiwork. It was I who laid hands on you, having seen your potential and encouraged you, got you going and did not let you slow down, but continue to spur you on. And I am doing that even now, but now I am cheering you in the race, and you in return are cheering for me. Why say more, you ask? I am willing all the time. That's most of it, and not only half, as in the saying, well begun is half done. This is something that depends on the mind. So when one is willing to become good, goodness is in large part achieved. Do you know what I mean by a good person? One who is complete, one who has been perfected, one who would not be made to do wrong by any force, any stricture. I foresee that you will be this good person if you persevere, if you press on and make all your actions and words cohere and fit with one another, all struck from the same mold. If the actions are inconsistent, the mind has not been set to rights. Farewell. I thought this was a very interesting letter because, as I said, it's, it's his personality that shines through. But more than that, I could very much relate to the feelings that, that Seneca describes here. Uh, in my uh, everyday life, my professional life, I'm, I'm an instructor of psychology, right? So I know what it is like to teach, and I've been doing it for quite a long time now, the teaching. So you see generations of students grow. And just a couple of weeks ago, I got an email from Marluce. Marluce was a student that I taught when she was a bachelor student. I was uh, working on my PhD and I taught a few tutorials in cognitive neuroscience. And um, she emailed me she, to say that she was about to defend her PhD. And I taught her as a bachelor student. She did her internship in our lab under my supervision. And uh, she did her master's thesis in our lab. And I actually had the, the, the pleasure and the honor of, of speaking uh, at her master's ceremony at the university where I worked at the time, uh, gave students their master's degrees uh, personally. So there were individual ceremonies for each student. And, and supervisors were asked to you know, give like a five-minute speech about how wonderful it had been to work with that student. And in her case, it, it really had been wonderful. She was a very good student. Then she moved on uh, to do her own PhD, and uh, and then she was she was done, right? She uh, she's she's now done. She defended successfully. She has a PhD, and she's actually hired as an assistant professor somewhere. Now, why do I why do I give you all this detail? That's always a good question when you're talking to me. <clears throat> but having said that, I I give you all this detail because I think it matters. If you have ever taught anything, anything at all, whether that was, you know, at a community center, at a college, university, a primary school, doesn't matter. If you've ever taught anything, even if that is just teaching a friend or a child how to do something, right? Then you know this feeling. You know this feeling that Seneca is alluding to, the feeling of watching a young mind grow. And I truly find that the most rewarding aspect of my job you get to see young people grow you help them along on their path and um, 
it's a wonderful feeling. The this is going to sound like a strange segue, but give me a minute. Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi was met with a lot of criticism. A lot of people didn't like it, and I understand some of the criticisms. But to be frank, I love I love the movie. I thought it was very nice. It has its it has its oddities, but it's Star Wars. It's not Shakespearean tragedy. You know, take it with a grain of salt. Anyway. There's a wonderful conversation in that movie between Luke and Yoda. about It's about teaching, about Luke feels that he has failed his student. And Yoda has a, a wonderful quote that when I... I'm a massive nerd and I've never denied it. But when I, when I heard that line in the cinema, I really had goosebumps because I could relate to it so much. Yoda says, we are what they grow beyond. That is the true burden of all masters. And I knew exactly what he meant. The fictional character puppet. Anyway, it's a very good quote, because that's what it's like. We see students graduate, and we see them progress. Even now, I, I, I get you know, uh, invitations on LinkedIn once in a while from students who've now graduated, want to connect, etc. It's just wonderful to see what they're doing. I'm a psychologist, and, and not a clinician, but I'm a psychologist, and I, and I see them, many become counselors, some become developmental psychologists, some um, um, become school psychologists, some, end, like Marlous, end up doing research, obtaining a PhD of, your, of, of their own. Um, and that was a Freudian slip just now, because I, I, I nearly said of your own, because that's what it feels like. It feels that you have been allowed to contribute to their path. You've been allowed to expand their minds. I, I, I've had a number of students who, uh, over the years, told me, you know, you have made me look at the world in a different way because I teach a lot of cognitive neuroscience, which for many psych students who are social science students, they find that very difficult. That's because it is. It's very difficult. It's very confusing, very difficult material. But... If they take to that type of material, they start to look at the world from a very scientific perspective, from a very neuroscientific perspective of the brain controlling things and not magical, strange software things, but the brain doing things, the brain motivating you to do things. And when I hear something like that, you've changed my outlook on the world. You've changed the way I look at life and, and the way I look at psychology. It's, it's as big a compliment as anyone could ever give you, right? Because it means that you have changed something. And this is really a, a privilege for, for any teacher. And we are what they grow beyond. They, the best students will surpass you, right? They, 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 they're the next generation. They will carry the torch and pass it on to, to, to their next generation. And it's wonderful to be allowed to be a part of that. It really is. I, I really feel that way. It's more than, than just a job. It's, 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 it's a calling to, to, to feel the need to contribute that. The hell does any of this have to do with Stoicism? Well, Seneca wrote it, and I thought I would respond to that. And I think you could say all kind of stoic things about don't let it get to your head. Remember that this is temporary, like things are temporary. Things could be taken away at any point in time. But I would also say that this is a good moment to emphasize again, stoicism is a very inward turned philosophy. It is not a philosophy that says, jump on the barricades and change the world by converting everyone. It doesn't do that, and I'm quite happy it doesn't. Stoicism assumes that change starts within yourself. And if enough people realize that, the world will change, will become a different place. Well, how do you make people discover things about themselves? By teaching them and encouraging them to look at things from a different perspective. By encouraging them to look at the world from a different perspective. By encouraging them to doubt the things they have been dogmatically taught, and to think for themselves, be skeptical and critical. 
And that is wonderful. And that is also very stoic, to try to encourage people to be the best version of themselves they can be without lecturing, without criticizing. Well, you know, you failed again. If only you would be a better stoic, then this would be... Because that's not fair, nor is it helpful. But the helping, trying to help people to discover different viewpoints, different ways to think, different ways to approach life and the, the struggles in life, right, can make a massive difference. And I'm very I'm 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 very fortunate and I and I sincerely mean that when I say it. I'm very fortunate that I've been I've been allowed to interact with so many wonderful students over the years, many of whom have gone on to do great things and um, it's very humbling to be a part of, of someone's life for you know sometimes half a year one course but sometimes I work at a smaller institution so we get to see our students in their first year when they take intro psych with us all the way to now that we have a psychology degree of our own we're allowed to give bachelor's degrees we can we can see students graduate we have guided them for four years and then they have become graduates of their own and they they grow beyond us and they move on into life to do their own things and I think it's great that that I'm allowed to be a part of that one of the best things of this job and in turn when you are not a teacher you can also do this you can also try to help other people by politely and courteously challenging the way they think or giving them advice if that is appropriate and thus helping them find their way and that's it I hope this was useful and um, I'm glad to see you next time for more talk about stoicism. Bye!